My level, I leveled out to 135 over 80, and I'm very happy. I have no zero um, muscle spasm and zero seizures. I stopped all of my seizure medication. The migraine from the toughest. In order to get rid of the migraine completely, I had to take a lot of oil, and it made me loopy. I felt I had gradually titrated the dosage upwards to achieve the almost complete relief. It is just a matter of adjusting to a higher dose, so I am almost there. I have made both the RSO and your recipe. My, life, my wife likes your recipe the best, not as strong, and there's room for taking more than necessary without getting that high. I'm working with the Indica strains, and I'm enjoying much better health, and so on. Um, I think I'll go ahead and get the third one and go to the next slide. Let me shoot. But I thought those were touching stories, and I, I just want to share with you, I'm not young, I'm 67 years old. I didn't get diagnosed with Ehlers Danlos until I was 54, which is inexcusable, but gave me the passion to step away from my career teaching and realizing that education is key for all of us to do, to pass it forward, to help each other out, and to find solutions for this really devastating condition. Um, I turned to cannabis and it was never once in my brain to even consider doing this. I was brought up, like most of you, believing that it was a, a gateway drug, that it was you know, dangerous, that you know, you'd get addicted, blah, blah, blah. Um, but here I was, since birth, being reactive. And the doctor basically said it seemed like I was reacting to my own, allergic to my own body. Um, I now endured 23 surgeries. And I didn't know what to do. It was um, when my primary doctor, before I went out to Wisconsin for a stress of uh, reconstruction, which is the bone of my throat, he suggested I go to the pain clinic doctor. And uh, to give you a little clue, it happens to be the doctor Kirk was at that new conference right now that I was sent to. I'd never met this man before. He, his nurse came into the room. It was actually a very funny story and started to ask me if I had children. I thought that was kind of odd. I said, yes, I had four adult sons, but I'm thinking, what the heck is she asking me that for? It's my pain. And then this nice gentleman walked in the room, Dr. Chopra, and within minutes, same question, do you have any children? I'm thinking, what the heck are they asking me this for? And, uh, and what he basically realized, looking at my records, is that I am so reactive that I, I, I honestly cannot metabolize aspirin, Tylenol, any of the opiates, Benadryl, you name it, so I'm so limited. And he turned to me and said, would you be willing to see if one of your sperms could get you some cannabis to try? Um, I have no sense of part of this program, but if it works, then I will be willing to sign. And, and basically, they're not signing a script. They're just confirming you have a medical condition that qualifies within your state. So I laughed at him because my parents would be rolling in the grave hearing this, the doctor suggesting I try cannabis. And to be honest with you, I tried it in college. I'm a total wuss. I took a couple of hits on a, on a um, um, smoking it back in my senior year of college and ended up spending the rest of the day lying in bed, feeling like I was going in and out of sub-80 pentanol. But there was nothing exciting about me thinking that I was going to try it. This was not on my list to do. Um, on top of that, because I have sarcoidosis, I, smoking anything could be fatal when I called my pulmonologist and asked him what he thought. But when I said, well, what about vaporizing, he said, go for it, that's fine, that's safe. So I have a chest filled with granulomas and enlarged lymphomas with sarcoidosis, but yet vaporizing is safe with that. Uh, in our state, um, I was very fortunate. I'm from the state of Rhode Island. We have had medical cannabis legal since 2006. It was 2007, I was now the 99th person that got the car and gave it a try. I came home, my, one of my sons got some of the product for me, his friend taught me how to convert it into oil, how he happened to know, I have no idea, but <laughs> and from that point on, I could not keep my mouth shut. I thought I've got to let other people know I'm old, it worked, I'm not scared, and I need to help the rest of you understand that with elders and loss and being so drug reactive, this is really something you need to think about trying. Um, I took a teaspoon of oil that night, scared to death, and sending it I was gonna be whacked out and crazy, told I went and warned my husband, just wanted you to know I just took it. And an hour later we went to bed. And the next thing I know, for the first time in years, I woke up and it was morning. 
Now, how can you keep your mouth shut and not share that with somebody else? It turned my life around. Now, um, there's many different ways to take cannabis. You can take it in an oil form, which I'll explain in a little more depth in a minute, uh, using the bud or the clippings. We make a lot of our oil using clippings, um, which and by clipping, I mean the little um, leaves that are around the actual bud itself get cut <laughs> off and, they, and trimmed to look, that have the bud look nice, but the bottom line is that trimming is loaded with the THC and the CBD that you need. So we use either one or both or whatever, and we make an oil. You can also go to dispensaries and, and you will find concentrated oil that can be in a syringe. Be very, very careful with that because this is a highly concentrated. So you're talking about the size of the piece of rice. Get that into your system. And um, just yesterday, I noticed somebody with EDS posting from New Hampshire that somebody had come into their home, found that syringe, and stolen it. The way I'm going to show you that I use it, I've never had a problem with anybody caring to, to use it or want it. I, you know, I mean, it's just not something that somebody wants to steal from you when it's in a liquid in an olive oil bottle. Um, juicing, I'm going to go into more detail in a minute. You can vaporize. There's pops and candy. You can see some of the ones we made over there in, uh, from one of the patients that we had. Um, tinctures, we're going to go into glycerin or alcohol base in a minute. And topical edibles and smoking. Um, first of all, I wanted, whoops, sorry, oops, on the back one, uh, whoops, uh, doing great here. Okay, um, let me share with you about making this oil. I, I know you don't need to copy all this down, you probably don't want to read all this, but I just want to show you, it's incredibly simple. When I started making this oil in 2007, because I could not smoke it, um, I was making it on top of the stove. It will smell like marijuana when you make it. Um, so you need to be, if you're going to make this in a place that you can comfortably do that and not be feeling self-conscious. But basically, the very simple formula, and I'm happy to give you my email address at the end of this. You're welcome to email me. If you want the recipe, I can send it out to you. Or if you have also questions, I'm happy to do that. I would have been doing that in person had I been there. And I had copies to give all of you. But basically, you heat up a couple of olive oil to 10 tablespoons of ground up product. I can grind it up either in a coffee grinder or even a cuisinart. I finally discovered the cuisinart takes so much more, it does it so much faster that I actually love it. Uh, it will be gooey when you're done. Uh, alcohol helps to get that stickiness off if need be. Um, and if you're making a top stove, you heat up the oil, not to boiling, but to hot and you test it. You sprinkle a little bit of that powder over the oil and if it starts to sizzle, like the sound of an alcohol, turn the heat off, pour the rest in, stir it up, and then just let it cool, strain, and that's it. You're done. Um, or the other option up here is now called the Magical Butter Machine. You can buy it right on Amazon. This machine is fantastic. I use the exact same formula. You can increase it or decrease it and put it into the butter machine, press it, you know, power, and uh, press the word oil, and within an hour, it created this morning oil. And so that's how I make it now. It's very important to understand when you take it this way that you are ingesting this. You're not smoking it, you're not vaporizing, you're not taking a tincture where that tends to be quick acting. You're taking it internally. So when that happens, you have to allow time for it to be absorbed into the body before you're going to be starting to feel pain relief. So don't don't overdo it. Take it slow because within 45 minutes to an hour after you first try this, that's when it's going to kick in. And it's not going to be like you're taking an opiate where you feel like your socks have been knocked off and you don't feel anything. And you know, it, instead, it just calms your body down and it allows you dignity to live your life again in a very gentle way. Um, so it's very important that you start slow. If you'll notice down here where it says dosage to start with, I started with you know to start with a quarter of a teaspoon, and each night you want to add a quarter teaspoon until you have woken up and slept the entire night and you're not groggy. If you wake up with the dose you took and you're groggy, then you want to back down. 
Don't panic if you get groggy. It's not a fun feeling. It's telling you don't go to that dose again. It will pass in the morning. Just be careful and safe if you're feeling that way, and it just means you have too much medication. Um, you need to understand that you're not going to get high in stone, which everybody assumes when you use cannabis, if you live with the body in pain. Your brain receptors react differently if you have pain. If somebody took the same thing you, you're taking, you live with pain, they don't. They're going to get high in stone. You're going to get pain relief unless you take too much. And if you jump too fast and take too much, you're not going to enjoy it. It's going to turn you off. So please um, listen to that warning and do that. Now, advantages to the oil and the way that we use it. It's much safer for your young lungs and to not be smoked in this medication. And so is vaporizing. This way, I literally had my pharmacist um, give me little, the small, like two ounce little medicine bottles that have those nice secure caps on it. And that's how I travel with it. I put the oil into those medical bottles, stick it in a plastic bag, in my check-in suitcase. I have traveled many places in this country that are not legal yet, and I've never been stopped. The first time we ever went to Wisconsin, I had some in the suitcases the night before the surgery, and I knew I could not use it in the hospital. We were just so sure that the police were going to be there and the dogs, and we were going to get arrested, and nothing happened. And that's the beauty of oil. If I had traveled with product, um, I would have been arrested. But I traveled with oil. No one cares about oil. They know that is medicine for somebody. So that's a safe, nice way to do it. Um, and the other thing is it stays in your system when ingested. And many days continues offering relief during the next day without no side effects. Um, so it's amazing. To be honest with you, despite just getting out of the hospital, having a really rough week, to this moment, I have not done anything but take my oil at night. It carries into the next day, giving you peace and calm with your body. Um, but again, be very careful in your dosing. Another option is, is taking the big leaves off the plant and juicing them. Now, this is not going to give you pain relief. This is not going to give you any sensation at all. Um, the, the oil lets you go to sleep. The juicing of these cannabis leaves instead is going to help with healing and, and strengthening your body. And I'd like to share an example. I had met a uh, Dr. William Courtney, who's from California, who was doing research on juicing cannabis leaves and the advantage of getting the CBD into your system. When you juice these big, large leaves, he suggested starting with 10, um, you put them into a, uh, you can get them into a pot of cold water, soak them for about five minutes, and then you put them into this juicer. Now, Lexan juicer is what I happen to use. It's meant for leaves only. Um, I'm not talking a juicer that you would use for, let's say, juicing carrots. You want to be careful with the juicer for leaves. Um, then you place the juice into a glass container and you mix it with some other type of juice that you like because you, when you see the color in a minute, it's just really dark green and has no flavor. So you want to put it with something you do enjoy. And you sit that about four or five times throughout the day. Now, um, the advantage of this is the following. I um, ended up having a surgery on my leg to reconstruct my tibia with a uh, cadaver tendon the year before and before I started trying to use it. I had to wear a bone stimulator for 10 hours a day for 10 months. The next year, I met Dr. William Courtney. I had just had that surgery. I had the plants at home. I could get the leaves. I went home. I did exactly what he said. I started sipping that juice throughout the day. And son of a gun, I get a call three months later saying, you're healed, you're done with the bone stimulator, you don't need to use this anymore. I was absolutely shocked. And all that was different was that I was juicing those leaves. Um, if you excuse me one second, I just have to have my husband get the other phone because I can't hear the battery trying to go. Can you get the phone and the battery dying? I'm so sorry. Um, can you guys hear that beeping? <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, now, this is a picture of the Lexan juicer. Um, it's very simple to use. You can see the big fan leaves in the top. You just push them in, press the button, and you can see this is the, um, does this arrow show up? I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is 
see what you're going to throw away down here, and the juice is going into this container. Okay? And if you make more than a day's supply of juice, you can either pour it, you can pour the uh, liquid into ice trays and freeze them. It stores for months uh, in a plastic bag in the freezer. Um, remember, you do not get any sensation from drinking this juice, but it does do magic in your body. And every research out there is showing incredible things of getting CBD into your system. And this is just showing you how green this, this is going to come out. Okay? I'm going to switch to this other phone because this one's really beeping. If you see one second. Can you hear me? Sure. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Um, other ways that you can use it, I'm sorry, is a tincture. There are two types of ways that we make it. One is a glycerin base. It takes an hour to make it a crock pot, so it's nice and quick to create. Uh, glycerin can be bought right on Amazon. You want to get pure glycerin, and if you happen to have issues with sugar or diabetes, um, it's going to taste sweet, but it is not something you should be concerned about. It does not have sugar in it. It, it tastes like it does, but it doesn't. Uh, the other type is an alcohol-based. Um, I take the clippings and or the bud. I put it into a canning jar. I pour alcohol of choice over the top. We generally use some type of schnapps, like a, one of the favorites our patients like is a lemon drop schnapps. Don't ask me why, but they love that one. And for two months, you just every day go in and shake that container, and it's slowly releasing the product into the alcohol, into the um, schnapps. And then you just, and it's really wonderful because you get all of it back. You, you, you know, two months later, you just take it out, squeeze that product, and you're going to get all that fluid back. For tincture, it's very simple. It's a quick re um, release. You put a teaspoon under your tongue or in your cheek for 20 seconds and you swallow it down. 20 minutes later, you're getting more pain back. You can take more. So this is a very gentle way to help get extra relief during the day. Over here, you see uh, a container that we make of topical. It's the nighttime oil with beeswax and peppermint extract. So when you open that container and put that onto your body, you're getting the properties into your skin that go right through your pores, but you do not smell of medical marijuana at all. Um, so that's, that's a really wonderful thing. People absolutely love it. It is oil-based, so you just have to be careful with clothing. You don't want to stain things, but you will find pretty quick relief from that. It's wonderful. Pops and candies, depending on what you need. I mean, I stay away from that because I don't do well with sugar. Um, edibles, I would highly encourage you with Eller's Dallas to be incredibly careful. Like, if you can make it yourself and you know what you're putting in for the food part, that's great. And, and the problem with Eller's Dallas is we tend to be food reactive. So if you go to a dispensary and get a cookie, um, be careful because you don't know, you know, you've got to look at what's it, in the making of that cookie as to whether you're able to metabolize that because maybe the reaction you might have could be from the food, not from the cannabis. And the other problem with an edible is it does not react immediately just like the oil. It's going to take time. So I have known people who have gone, bought themselves a cookie, came home, took a bite, felt nothing. So they eat the whole cookie, and an hour later, now they are stoned. So again, you can take too much of this and get that reaction. So just be careful if you get into edibles. To know what you're getting in and how much you're taking. Start slow. Give it 45 minutes to an hour before you take more of it. Um, and then there's always vaporizing, which many people do use as an option here in Rhode Island. And in Rhode Island, we tr pretty much try to encourage people not to smoke. Um, for some people, it's the only thing that works for them, and that's fine. But there's no study out there yet showing that smoking cannabis is causing problems with the lungs. But we all don't need any more issues than we already have to live with. So I would just, if you can avoid it, it would be good. Some having, I think we missed one. Yeah, okay. Um, it's really nice to get pain relief. It's something we all need. Um, I sleep. And unless my breathing is cut off, I have a trachea that moves and the sternum slips in, and I actually, despite a bypass and some nights of oxygen, 
can end up with my breathing cut off and my service dog will alert me and I reposition and the flow comes back until I can get to a manual therapist and get things back in place. But you need to help your body also with keeping inflammation down. So there's two things I just wanted to throw in here and mention to you. And I was bringing a whole case of these to Nevada, and unfortunately here I am back home, I'm so sorry. I actually had the kits ready to hand to you for DNA and drug sensitivity testing. Many of us don't even realize that part of the reason we feel so horrible and we're subluxing even more is because we're taking medication that's not compatible to the body. I think every baby at birth should have this DNA testing done right away so you spend the rest of your life knowing whatever you're putting in your body is safe. Instead, we have all played that game of reacting and not and you spend a week or two thinking, well, maybe it's a medication, maybe I'm getting sick, you don't know. You swab the inside of your, your um, cheek, you send it off to the lab, I would call them first. When I had this done, my insurance covered it. It may not be that case now, so I don't want to mislead you, but you know, you just get the kit, if you can afford it, it has to cost, you know, cost out of pocket, you know, just explain your circumstance. And then they, within two weeks, you get, uh, it was actually Greek to me, a list of all these things that you can and cannot take. And you need somebody to interpret it. I paid, I think it was $50, $25 for a pharmacist to take me on. And any time I have a question, I email this company and say, this is what the doctor wants to put me on. Is this going to be compatible to my body? And they are able to say yes or no, if not, this is what you can use. And it's alleviated um, um, so many drug reactions since then, so it's a wonderful thing. The other thing you need to consider is your food sensitivities. I don't think I've met an EDS patient in the state of Rhode Island or in my traveling that doesn't also have issues, whether it's dairy or gluten or soy or the nightshade vegetables. You want to identify what are those items that are good foods you're putting into your personal body that are not compatible for you. And it's heartbreaking when you get that list back. I mean, <laughs> It's, I mean, I even had lettuce on the list one time, but I, I respected that list because I wanted to feel better. And when I started eliminating those items, that brought the inflammation down in my body, thus reducing the number of subluxations I was having to experience. So just something else to think about. Okay, I'm sure you're all, am I going to get high? Am I going to get stoned? What's the scoop? So let's talk about society stigma. Um, it is, is it still there, it, it, depending where you are in the country, if you are in a legal or illegal state, um, there are still people that just assume, including doctors in the state of Rhode Island that's been legal since 2006. I was at a conference, it was mostly doctors. Um, I happened to raise my hand and admit that I was one of the patients within the state they, and told them I took oil at night. And they, I can't tell you how many came up to me at the break and said, we didn't you take oil, we thought everybody smoked. Um, and they just assumed I was getting high on this. And also they meet this a woman who's in her 60s and she's not high. Um, so, you know, we have to work on this education to get this understanding that and if your body in pain, you do not get high and stoned unless you take too much. You can take too much of this and then you're going to pay that price. If you take the dose that's compatible to your body, you're going to get pain relief. If somebody else took exactly what you just took and they did not live with pain, they would end up with getting the reaction that most of us associate with cannabis. Um, education is so important. If you try this, you like it, I hope you'll pay, pay it forward like I try to do and, and share your story and don't be afraid to share that because people need to not be scared of this. The government needs to get it out of Schedule 1. We need to allow it to be, I mean, the fact that this is up there with heroin is ridiculous. Um, we need to get people out there and understanding and many doctors will say, well, there's no, no studies in our country. Well, that's because they have been Schedule 1. Has, so we're, we're working and trying to undo all that. If you're in a state that um, has developed the program, I hope 
you qualify because it's very important. Um, only the state of New Hampshire, and I give them credit, although they had chronic pain already as a listing qualifying condition, one woman actually worked and um, advocated to get Ehlers Downs listed as an actual qualifying condition in the state of New Hampshire. That is the only state in the country that has that individual listed. And she did that to advocate, and I give her credit. Um, but you want to make sure you have some form of chronic pain in your qualifying conditions because it's nothing more heartbreaking to finally have your state say, yay, we're allowing medical marijuana, our cannabis, and, and it's like uh, HIV, cancer, MS, you know, like what about the rest of us that have different conditions? So you want a more general uh, wording. We have never stopped advocating for medical cannabis here. This was one winter when all of a sudden the governor did her uh, speech in January and she's just been elected and suddenly decided that she was going to charge us $375 for each plant that we, put, that we were growing because according to her, we, uh, each plant's worth $17,000. I'm thinking, <laughs> what is she talking about? So, you know, I invited the government's so. office out of the house. I showed them a real grow. I showed them how much profit you actually get out of a little plant because you have to keep the process growing to get your food in, I mean, your medication in. And all of a sudden, if anybody on SSI or SSDI gets the tags for free to put on their plants, and otherwise it's down to $25 a plant to grow. So, you know, don't give up fighting because we just have to educate. So is it safe? It's actually less invasive. There is no report of organ damage. There is no report of anybody dying from this. I am not making this up. I, we have a website I'll show you at the end. You're welcome to go to it. Look up all the research that we've included into this website. It, it's, it's safe and it's so silly that we've all been so scared to try it um, when this is something that's so gentle. Um, addictive, I'm 67, I've been using it for 10 years. I have never once in my tenure had this desire that I had to hurry up and go get my oil or go get some tincture or you know, it, just, it just doesn't happen. If you have addictive personality, then that's something you deal with no matter what you take. But for most of us, it, it, this is not a gateway drug to other drugs, so don't be concerned about that. I included this uh, the, um, recently published um, from the uh, Journal of Bones and Mineral Research in Tel Aviv University in Hebrew. And Israel has been researching cannabis for years. So they've been allowed to, we haven't. Um, and it's amazing. It's strengthening bones and accelerating healing of fractures. And I know this is true because for two years, my insurance didn't approve Prolio for my bones that are a 98-year-old woman. I just went to my endocrinologist, and he was shocked when he did the last bone scan to see that I actually had, had a slight improvement. I had been on anything, any of this medication. All I've been using is cannabis. So I, there's no other reason to explain why it is I could possibly um, be getting better. Okay, my, where is, where's my pointer? What is my pointer doing? There it is, okay, sorry. Okay, if you happen to be in a legal state, um, are you allowed to grow? Many legal states are not allowing this. If there's any way you can encourage that, I would go for it because it tends to be less expensive. Um, you tend to have the rights to, this is cloning, this is me taking a clipping off a female plant and you can see the root is just starting to come in. Um, and this way I'm keeping that strain growing. What happens sometimes in a distribution center is you find your perfect matches and, and not every plant. If, if I gave you all exactly what I took, let's say we were going to vaporize and I picked one strain and it worked for me, even though we all have the same condition, it does not mean it's going to work for you. So each person's body is going to require something different. So don't get frustrated if you go to the dispensary and you try something and it wasn't the match. Don't give up. Keep trying it. The only disadvantage of the dispensaries is sometimes they don't always have that strain again. Um, when you go back, it might be another month or two. It takes about three months to go from, from a clone to the actual product. So that is a big advantage to build the home growth, that you can get the strain that works for you and then move from there. 
This is just showing you that instead of having one shoot coming up, which would become the bud, I work on bonsaiing these plants out. So each shoot is going to become a bud and will give you more product. And this is what you're looking at when it's close to being harvested. If you notice, it almost looks like the little crystals on there. And that's the CBD and THC in the plant that is the benefit to you. And I know there's a lot of controversy about THC and getting it high in stone. It, you know, you can go online right now and order CBD only, which is part of the plant. And that's not the psychedelic part of the plant. It's not going to get you any high at all. It might be your magic if you're in an illegal state. I need personally to have THC in my plant um, for my oil too to get the full pain relief. So again, it's going to be different on your body. Each person is going to have a different need. We uh, grow inside the cellar and also during the growing season outside, we have this greenhouse attached to the house, which we are allowed legally to do here in Rhode Island. And um, a lot of our donations to people that we many times will donate a sample for people to try to see if they want to um, really go with this or not. And this is very, very helpful. If you'll notice, this is not glass. This is um, plastic that's tinted and people can't see it. So it's very private. This is what it looks like from the outside. Nothing exciting, but you know, really no, nobody um, knows from visually looking. If you do not put a carbon uh, unit on the outside of the vent, you will smell cannabis as it gets to the firing stage. We have to live in the country, um, so that's not a problem. Okay, I just want to throw in, before I get to questions here, that I want you to hold on to hope. Back in 2014, I was referred to hospice. I was that bad. Things were going downhill. My breathing was getting very severe. I needed my neck to be fused for years, but it was not an option because my bones were that of a 98-year-old woman, and I responded to nothing. Um, when they sent the hospice people out, they were very kind and sweet, but the bottom line is it required that I would need to use their physical therapist coming into the home that would have no understanding of Bell's family. I personally use a modality physical therapy. I do manual therapy, which is safe. I lay on the table, they put my subluxations in. I wasn't willing really to take that chance because I already had two surgeries from a very sweet um, regular physical therapist that didn't understand the condition, and I ended up tearing both legs, spent a summer on crutches before I ended up losing my career. Um, and then a few months later, my doctor tried referring me to palliative care. And again, it was that same thing, and it's really sad. Um, the only way I could accept it was if I was willing to take on a physical therapist that knew nothing about the condition. And when I had what was working for me outside of the home, it made no sense. So I didn't go to that, but that's how close I was coming to the end of my life. But yet today, for the first time in 12 years, almost two years after my neck fusion, that he finally figured out how he could accomplish using it's Dr. Bolganese in my neck with short screws, and that was phenomenal. It worked, um, it, it has extended my life, and the quality of my life is ridiculously so much better. I'm, for the first time in years, able to drive a little bit. I'm walking up and down stairs. I'm walking on the street, and I'm walking into the stores, <laughs> not in a wheelchair or on a scooter. So I'm feeling huge improvements. It's a little bit to say this to you after just getting out of hospital. I don't know what happened. We're looking into this right now, but generally my life has include, I, improved, and it's still shocking me. I didn't think I could ever get back a little bit what I had lost. And here are the resources. Um, my husband and I had set up, and actually my son, one of our sons set this up. It's um, ellenstewart.squarespace.com. This, is, this website is just to pass forward what we have collected through the years. So there's one section on chronic pain, there's another section about cannabis, um, there's another section all on Ellers Danlos, including listing of doctors that we slowly have added to from across the country that are caring about us. And I try to tell people when they get so frustrated and they say, well, who's the cannabis doc? I mean, the uh, Ellers Danlos doctor, and I say, well, especially primary, it's sometimes very hard to find somebody, but I think if you find somebody who's willing to work with you and learn with you and is interested in helping you, don't let them go. Educate them. 
work together and you know you're going to help that next person working with that doctor. And we can't assume that everybody knows this. I spent five years in a row going to Brown University Medical School. I, I'm part of the curriculum now. I come in in August when they're only in their second week of brand new school and I teach them about allergies and more. I say, you know, most of us are diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I said, if your patient comes back, they're not getting better, their bo bones are sublensing, please take Ehlers Danlos. And it's slowly working. One of the young men was actually randomly selected Dr. Chopra, of all people, to be his mentor one year. I was coming into the office, I was put into a room, open, a uh, door opens and in walks this person. And I said, oh, okay, who are you? I mean, it wasn't Dr. Chopra, he hadn't come in yet. He said, well, I know you. He had actually remembered sitting in that audience in medical school and, and was so excited that he'd come to the pain clinic and was meeting other people with Ellis Allen. So it just takes time. I've spoken to the Blue Cross um, nurses. They've invited me for a second time just this past year to educate all their staffing because now when somebody in our state with Blue Cross calls and says, I have Ellis Allen, they say that you have the right, if you wish, to have a nurse assigned to you a case manager. And right now, Mon is helping me because I had some pretty horrific experience in the hospital that we're adjusting together. So, you know, just take advantage of that. Um, this site, the second one here, is just if you want to find out the details specifically about your state, you would want to turn to that. Um, each state's rules and laws are going to be different. If you find that your state has a medical program, then the next thing I would encourage you to do is contact the Department of Health and, and just get educated on the, and you know, where's the application, what do I have to do? Each state's going to be different. In our state, the doctor, you can go to a uh, doctor and have them sign the form. And, and what I love about our state fought for is we also have um, places you can go to if, you're, if you can't find a doctor to sign for you, then you can pay out of pocket and we can bring your medical records with an appointment to a real doctor at a clinic that specifically is established to help um, determine if you qualify in Rhode Island and they have the rights to sign for you too. So we have a lot of options, but it's taking years to create this. Um, I also write about um, elder Stanlis, cannabis, and chronic pain for pain news network. Um, there's a lot of stories in there that would be of help. And there should have been another, huh, it just went blank. Um, there should have been one more thank you in a picture, but I don't see it there. That's really weird. I don't know where it went to, so I guess we'll stop there. Um, are we able to do questions? Does anybody know? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, am I able to take questions or am I out of time? I don't have a clock in front of me, so I'm sorry. I don't know what time is. Okay. Then can I can I give them my email address, Sean, just in case anybody wants to be in touch? Would that be okay? Okay. Okay. Can they can they still hear me? Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. It's Ellen E L L E N dot Smith S M I T H the number two at gmail dot com. So it's Ellen dot Smith, the number two at gmail.com. And I'm happy to send you the recipe if you want to think about trying that oil. And I'm also happy to respond and answer questions. And I'm so sorry I'm not there with you all in person. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful time together. Thank you.